Hello, thank you for tuning in to this Alpha Data video cast. My name is Zach Ibini, and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about big data. Um, as always, if you have any questions about what I'm discussing with you today, please don't hesitate, send in your answers, and uh, myself or one of our team members will be sure to get back to you and help answer, answer your question. So, uh, let's get started. What is big data? Big data, as a textbook definition, is any large, structured, or unstructured data set which cannot be analyzed using conventional database analytic techniques. So, what does that mean? If we're looking at a structured database, it is anything up to a petabyte of information stored on a SQL uh, type uh, database. If we're looking at an unstructured data set, which could be pictures, video feeds, um, uh, sensory inf uh, input information, documents, if they're all gathered together and uh, classified as a data set, it could even be something as small as 50 gigabytes. Why? Because we cannot analyze it using conventional database analytic techniques right so really big data is all about the analytics it's about having different types of information di different types of data inputting it into your analytic machine let's call it and getting an output which can be usable it will give you usable information um, to make a good informed decision about business or uh, specific organizational structure, something like that. So, when we look at big data, it can be uh, classified into three separate um, types. The first one is, obviously, it's big. It's a very large amount of information. We can always call it as a very high volume. The second uh, way we can describe it is velocity, right? So, this is um, high uh, high amounts of information being created almost real time. If we can imagine an example such as a um, uh, a telco or an ISP, just imagine how much information they have, how many phone calls being made at one time. If they try to analyze all of that at at this uh, at the same time, they'll usually come up with some problems. However, with big data they can actually analyze it in real time and get information out of that in real time again to help them make again more informed decisions and the last way we classify it is variety so this is again uh, an unstructured database which has different types of information and you can analyze it in a conventional way but with the technology which is around big data we can now analyze it and get some information out of that Co uh, correlate all of this information so that we can make good informed decisions again. So we have the inputs. We input this information into into uh, our big data analysis, and um, really that's where we're finding that this is something which is a, a special subject matter um, type technology. Is it's not about a specific box and it's not about a specific software. It's knowing how to work with the information specifically and when we do the analysis on top of the the software it's a lot of statistical uh, analysis of the information to get a good uh, output right and uh, one very important piece of the puzzle but uh, not not what makes the whole is the tools that we use uh, to analyze that data and what we're finding now is there's a lot of new technologies which have come out which have made all of this possible and brought all of the um, subject of big data together so we have uh, high velocity uh, analysis machines we have uh, new so softwares such as Hadoop or Apache which allows to analyze the information uh, much uh, in a much better way than we used to before and then there's the actual analysis and again as I said this really requires a subject matter expert you cannot be um, coming from a specific industry like the airline industry and apply the same techniques to something like a banking industry it requires different 
techniques and different understanding of the information which you need to analyze. So once we do the analysis, really what it's about is the output, right? If you say your IT team does the analysis of the data, they need to be able to take that information and give it in a, um, a discernible manner to uh, a business manager or an organization manager so they can make better informed decisions uh, and possibly changes to the current setup, right? Now, if we look at some examples of big data in the real world successes uh, we can take I've got three for you the first one is uh, the London Olympics right the the London transportation system is very big very complex but um, during the London Olympics there was a goal in mind to have a very smooth um, transportation system which would give people obviously a good experience so what did they do they analyzed uh, a lot of different uh, data points such as Twitter feeds, um, geospatial maps, uh, their own London transport uh, data database with all of their customers, the people traveling, wh what uh, specific types of transport do they use. And they use this to modify the uh, tr transportation system by giving specific bus lanes, taxi lanes, um, running trains and, and underground at different times. And the result was they got a much more uh, smooth running and successful uh, Olympics in terms of the transportation than we can see with other countries who don't get the, the same level of, um, of uh, smoothness on, on, on their transportation system. Another uh, example is supermarkets. Um, what we're, we're seeing now is that supermarkets actually if they don't use big data, they are falling behind when it comes to competition. So uh, one good example is Walmart. Walmart uh, uses a lot of its customer information and buying habits uh, to make changes to uh, even their floor layout. Uh, one example is uh, they analyzed and they found that um, men, married men with children who come in on a Thursday to uh, do their shopping, they'll buy diapers and they'll also typically buy uh, beer. So what did they do? They took um, the, the beer aisle and they sat it right next to the diaper aisle and they found that people who went uh, and bought diapers also uh, went and bought uh, beer specifically. They put some special offers on uh, for the beer and uh, what they, they got an increase of 3% in their in their sales which is is quite remarkable the last example is um, target and this shows us a little bit of the big brother effects which come from big data and uh, it's also a bit of a warning for us to see how much organizations can actually know and what they can actually do with that information so one day in target a man came in uh, very very angry with the fact that his daughter had received a coupon book which was full of um, specific special offers for uh, babies and baby products and um, he was very angry because he was saying to the store manager my daughter is not pregnant how are you sending her all of this information for um, pregnancy uh, for a pregnant woman when she's not pregnant they apologized, but um, after some time, he came back in and he also said that his daughter was actually pregnant. And the funny thing is, we have to ask ourselves, how did Target or the Target systems know this to send a, um, a coupon book full of products for uh, a pregnant woman? And uh, if we look into the actual example, um, what Target did is they were analyzing the buying habits of this, this uh, gentleman's daughter and uh, through a, a, a long analysis they found that women who enter into their second trimester of pregnancy, if they were buying hand creams, they will switch to an unscented brand. Why do they do this? The, the, the scented, uh, smell, the scented um, hand cream uh, makes them feel nauseous so they switch to something unscented based on that they sent her a coupon book full of, um, of offers for, for a pregnant woman and 
uh, the, the story unfolded. Uh, but what we can find is that actually, if we consider this example, it's actually prevalent all over the world in many different types of organizations and people actually know an awful lot about their customers, especially organizations. So we should keep, keep that at note, but also understand that there's huge benefits to the changes which big data is making in our world. And uh, I honestly believe we should embrace them. Again, my name is Zach Ibini with Alpha Data. Thank you for tuning in. And hopefully we'll see you next time when we'll be covering another um, new technology topic for you guys to uh, get an introduction to. Thank you very much.